This cost volume profit analysis is based on the cost classification that you discovered during the session two, which is the distinction between what is fixed and what is variable. So this cost volume profit analysis is based on a set of formulas and there are very few things to learn in that course, but that slide you really need to know because it contains all the formulas that we're going to use in order to implement that cost volume profit analysis. So let me remind you of um, the concept of margin first. This concept of margin is different from the concept of profit or loss because a margin is, hey please can we have a, a break? So um, a margin, please, yeah, can you turn that way? So um, a margin means an intermediate level of profitability as opposed to income, profit or loss, which indicates that somehow all the, the revenues and expenses have been taken into account. So you already knew the concept of gross margin. Gross margin is sales minus the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold represents a part of the cost, but not all of them, since the cost of goods sold contains the manufacturing cost. But in the manufacturing cost, you can get some valuable manufacturing cost, for instance, the raw materials and labor, and you can get also fixed manufacturing cost, like the depreciation of the manufacturing assets. Here, what we want is not to calculate a manufacturing margin, but a margin which isolates on the one end the, the valuable cost and the fixed cost. So the contribution margin, and you see it when you look at the definition of unit contribution margin, it is the price mi minus only a part of the cost, the cost which vary according to the level of activity. So the, unit, the contribution margin at the unit level, you see it here, that's the unit price minus the unit variable cost. I just check that. Okay, so um, at the unit level, you subtract the unit variable cost from the selling price, but you can also calculate the total contribution margin, and the total contribution margin would be, and it's not written on the slide, but if you want to calculate the total contribution margin, you would get this, total contribution margin equal sales minus valuable cost. Okay, so um, you've got, uh, well in fact it was written here, you see it um, there, sales minus total valuable cost, that's your total contribution margin. You can of course calculate your total contribution margin by using the unit contribution margin. If you have just one activity, or if you have got an average activity, you take the unit contribution margin and you multiply with the quantities and you get the total contribution margin. Why is it called contribution margin? Because the challenge for any company is to cover its fixed cost. So what you want, and you can look at the last row of the slide, what you want is that each activity provides its contribution its contribution margin in order to absorb, in order to cover the fixed cost. So the logic is very simple. You've got some fixed cost. You expect each activity to bring a positive contribution to the covering of, fix, of fixed cost in order to earn money. And the logic is pretty simple. If an activity has a positive contribution margin, you should keep it. Any activity which increases your total contribution margin helps you to better absorb your fixed cost. So there's no reason to let go, to forsake an activity which has a positive contribution margin unless you can replace it with another one which has a higher contribution margin. But the logic is simple. You expect each activity to provide a positive contribution in order to absorb fixed cost. So you have you have on the one end a margin which neglects all the fixed cost and then you sum the margins achieved on each and every activity and you look if the total of all those margins is higher or not than the fixed cost you need to cover which are going to be the same regardless of the level of activity.
So another concept which is useful is the concept of contribution margin ratio. Contribution margin ratio is your ratio of margin. So the contribution margin ratio is your, is your margin for 100 euros of sales. If you are told that the contribution margin ratio is 20%, it means when you sell 100, you get a contribution margin of 20. Okay? If you sell X, X being your sales, you apply that 20% to your sales and you get the corresponding contribution margin. So the contribution margin ratio is a relative element of margin as opposed to the unit margin, the margin per unit, or the total margin. The, the contribution margin ratio gives you the margin for 100 euro of sales. How do you calculate it? You see it on top. Either you divide the unit margin by the unit selling price, or you take your total margin and divide it over the sales. So it's not very complex. It's a method which aims at uh, describing the functioning of a company and provide clear guidance to um, everyone in the company. The, the salespeople should try to maximize the contribution margin. If you maximize the contribution margin with fixed cost being fixed, you maximize profitability. Every time you increase the total contribution margin by one euro, your earnings, your income, should also increase by one euro because we assume that fixed costs are fixed. So because fixed costs are fixed, we can sort of neglect them. You remember this idea about sunk cost? You remember maybe the Michigan and Wisconsin exercise? What had already been spent, what is going to be fixed anyway, is irrelevant for making decisions. If you are in a profit optimization perspective, you need to try to maximize the total contribution margin. If you have a limited capacity, you should focus on the elements which provide the highest contribution margin for one unit of capacity used. If you are limited with hours, for instance, you need to sell and manufacture the things which get the highest contribution margin per hour, not in absolute terms, but per hour because it is your constraining factor. So it's a very simple method. I want you to understand that if you look at the last row of the slide, you don't really care about fixed cost. For instance, you don't try to split the fixed cost between the different activities. You don't allocate the fixed cost between the different activities because you are going to say they are fixed anyway. You will say what will increase or decrease my total EBIT, earnings before interest and tax, that's the evolution of my contribution margin, the total one. If I can increase it with fixed cost being fixed, I increase my profit. If I decrease it somehow, then I will decrease my profitability. And fixed cost, insofar as they remain fixed, play no role in explaining the movement of your profitability. So we come back to this idea again that the relevant costs are the costs which are different when you consider different alternatives. Since fixed costs are the same, whatever the decision you make about the product that you're going to sell, they are irrelevant for making decisions. You should be focused on your contribution margin and the higher it is, the better the income you're going to generate. 